According to the World Health Organization's data, the prevalence of diabetes in the country is at 3.3. This figure is expected to go high by 4.5 by the year 2025. Unfortunately for us, you are expecting the figure to go higher because of the undetected and the undiagnosed cases which are at 40 to 50 percent. This is quite a big figure if you ask me. My name is Lillian Momina. I am going to take us through a session of understanding type 2 diabetes as part of health promotion and prevention. So what is diabetes? This is a chronic metabolic disorder that is characterized by an elevated blood glucose due to defects in the production, secretion and utilization of the insulin hormone. Insulin is the hormone that is tasked with controlling blood glucose in the body. When your circulating blood glucose goes high, it is produced to control that. You are said to be diabetic if your random blood glucose goes above 11 and your fasting blood glucose goes above 6.5. There are different types of diabetes. We have type 1 diabetes which is an autoimmune disorder that is characterized by no production or low production of insulin and it majorly affects the young population. So if you are a type 1 diabetic you need to be on insulin. Then we have gestational diabetes that comes about due to pregnancy and it should not be confused with having diabetes before pregnancy. And then we have type 2 diabetes that we are going to talk about. So what causes diabetes? Studies have revealed that diabetes comes about due to accumulation of several factors and we have the modifiable and the non-modifiable factors. The modifiable factors we have lifestyle which encompasses diet and this includes how well you eat your food, what type of foods you're eating, the times and frequency of your feeds, how good you match your food intake with the energy expenditure a day. Still on diet, we have consumption of carbohydrates which is the main trigger for blood glucose, the sugary foods and the sugary drinks. Are you taking care of your fiber? Are you taking care of your other macronutrients? nutrients and other micronutrients well to help you support your metabolic health and reduce the occurrence of these diseases. The second factor on lifestyle we have exercise, basically your physical activity level. How active are you? How engaging is your day-to-day -day routine? Does your job allow you to be physically active? If not, you need to make sure that you plan to be physically active as it is a preventive mechanism of diabetes and controlling it. And then we have the third one is obesity. There is a direct relationship between obesity and metabolic syndrome. Then this later develops to type 2 diabetes make sure that you work on that weight. You can check up the videos on weight management and get a thing or two on that. You also have alcohol. How much and how frequent are you drinking your alcohol? Are you allowing your cells and liver time to detoxify? Are you feeding your gut to prevent the effect, the bad effects of alcoholism? Are you an addict? So you need to make sure that you also control this. Also smoking. There's an association of smoking and metabolic syndrome that triggers diabetes. You control that too. Also on the modifiable factors we have stress and sleep routines. How well are you sleeping? How engaging in terms of of emotional, mental, and physical well-being is your day-to-day -day activity. Are you putting up mechanisms to prevent and manage these stressful conditions? Are you sleeping well enough to allow your body time to rest from the activities of the day and also to allow your brain to reset and rejuvenate? And then we have the non-modifiable factors, the factors that we can only pray about. We have age. Diabetes used to be a problem of the elderly in the past, but unfortunately currently we are having people as young as 30 developing type 2 diabetes because of the changing lifestyle and habits. If you're above 40, it will be wise for you to readjust your lifestyle to a healthier lifestyle if you have not been doing so in the past. So try and work on that so that you prevent the occurrence of disease. Then we have the second factor we have is genes. Do you have a family member, your mom, your brother, your sister? If this is so, you need to make sure that you put preventive mechanism in place so that you don't get the disease. Another non-modifiable factor that we have is environment, pollution. There has been a lot of revolution in terms of trade, production, agriculture and such. This has led to release of a lot of toxins in the environment. This has not only changed the quality of food that you're eating, it has also compromised on the quality of air that you're breathing. What our animals are feeding, the quality of water that you're drinking, and this negatively affects our genes and DNA. Over time, there's a lot of impact on our metabolic health and this predisposes us to metabolic syndromes and thus development of chronic disorders such as type 2 diabetes. The other non-modifiable factor will be international trade. In Kenya being a third world country, there's very little that we can do in terms of influencing policies that affect food production, distribution and such. We find ourselves with a lot of imported, refined and processed foods that are going to make their ways to the common one tables. Unfortunately for the working population due to the busy schedules and such, you find that for most of them, time for meal preparations is a bit difficult to come by. They tend to run to
to the easier options and unfortunately these easy options are not the healthy ones and with time this affects their metabolic health and predisposing them to type 2 diabetes having talked about some of the causes of diabetes we can briefly discuss on the signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes one is increased urination this comes by because the increased glucose in the blood means that the blood that is going to be taken to the kidneys will have more sugars ideally in a normal homeostasis balance in the glomerulus the glucose is supposed to be reabsorbed back so that the body can utilize it for energy when the blood glucose is too high the tubules get a bit overwhelmed they cannot reabsorb back the blood the filtration does not go as it's supposed to be so you will find that people with diabetes usually have sugar in their urine and when this sugar is going out it will draw water from the blood and this increases urine output when this happens the cells are a bit dehydrated and then the second signs and symptom which is the frequent thirst you're constantly thirsty you're constantly drinking water because of the fact that glucose is hyper smaller when it's drawing the water as it leaves the kidneys it's going to make your cells dehydrated the thirst cues will be triggered so that the body can drink up and replenish the third sign and symptoms of diabetes we have is excess hunger you're overly hungry you can eat like right now and then two hours later you are extremely hungry this is because there is a lot of circulating blood glucose and this blood glucose cannot get into the cells the insulin receptors in the cells are not active and or they are not working or they are dead or they are tired they will not allow insulin in so that the cells can utilize the glucose for energy so your body will be constantly hungry because your cells are hungry and you're eating but you're not getting full the fourth sign will be involuntary weight loss unexplained weight loss we've talked about cell starving not getting enough food what you're feeding your body is not being utilized for energy the body will start sourcing energy from the stored sources that the first place it will go to go to your fat area lipolysis will be triggered this brings about breakdown of triglycerides to glycerol and fatty acids that they can be used to produce energy and these cells are depleted then to start the breakdown of muscles in the body a process called proteolysis to release amino acids so that they can be used for the production of glucose to try and get some energy with all these processes there's a lot of breakdown that is coming about from the cellular and muscular levels and you will definitely lose the weight if you are experiencing unexplained weight loss it will be wise for you to check your blood sugars another sign and symptom will be acne and dark patches on the skin the circulating blood glucose brings about skin infection it might be having a lot of breakouts and such things before you start on treatment or before you go to a dermatologist it will be wise if you have any of the other signs and symptoms for you to get your blood sugars checked another sign and symptom will be frequent bacterial infections such as utis this comes about due to the increased sugar levels in the urine they create a conducive environment for the growth of the bad bacteria that causes this infection and apart from that they also make it easier for this bacteria to colonize and reproduce and this brings about infection in those areas another thing that you can get with diabetes is usually urine incontinence you get that you're releasing urine and you're not even aware or you're having problems with sensing whether your bladder is pressed or something there are several factors that might lead to this in diabetes patients you might be having maybe you're obese or overweight so there's a lot of pressure around the abdominal area this brings about a lot of pressure in the blood the storage capacity of the bladder is compromised you can also be experiencing this because of the nerve damage that comes with uncontrolled blood sugars having said that what are some of the complications that are associated with uncontrolled blood glucose one we have vision loss and vision impairment you might get partial blindness or total blindness you can also have development of cataracts and that is called retinopathy there is also neuropathy that is the nerve damage that comes about with uncontrolled blood sugars you can also get some paralysis you can get brain damage you can have diabetes induced psychosis because of neurological damage there is impaired wound heal your wounds don't heal as good as they should be your blood clotting is compromised diabetes usually have a low hb level because glucose conjugates protein and lipids this leads to an enzymatic browning and this kills the red blood cells when this happens your hb levels is usually compromised so you want to make sure you take care of your, your feet you avoid getting cut another complication that comes with uncontrolled blood sugar is kidney failure diabetes is one of the leading causes of both acute and chronic kidney diseases if you exhibit any of the signs and symptoms and you have history it is important to check and make sure that you control this diabetes before it brings these complications the other complication of course will be the comorbids that come with diabetes we have hypertension cardiovascular disorders we can get liver failure make sure you stick around because we will be discussing on the dietary management of diabetes next if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe like and share see you then bye